Welcome back to AMD Tution. In this video, we will be making predictions for this year's GCSE Biology Paper 2 paper, which is coming up in just a few days from now. The predictions from the Paper 1 videos were pretty accurate, so it may be worth you considering staying around till the end of this video and taking some notes on what we say. So in terms of homeostasis, I think it's going to be very important to know the different parts of the nervous system. So the central nervous system, sensory neurons, motor neurons, effectors, and just be prepared to answer any question if they ask you directly what one of these components are. Also be prepared to answer any question that asks you to explain how the nervous system coordinates a response. For example, if someone touches a painful stimulus or the process of someone seeing an object, make sure that you talk through all the stages, such as from the stimulus to the receptor to the sensory neuron through the central nervous system, motor neuron, effector, and what response that elicits. Also be aware of small concepts such as what a synapse is, that's the connection between two neurons. Make sure that you're also able to explain what a reflex arc is and how it works and how reflexes are important in us preventing injury. On the screen, I've provided some notes about this, so make sure that you screenshot this and you can use this to aid your revision. Also make sure that you are well versed in terms of the kidneys and diabetes. A common question that can usually come up, and sometimes as a six mark question especially, is asking you to compare the advantages and disadvantages of a transplant. And remember, they could directly ask you about this in terms of the kidney, but they are aware that you've learned about the kidney already. So what they could do is provide you a different example of a different body part and ask you to compare the advantages and disadvantages about this. So I'm putting some notes here on the screen. Again, screenshot these and learn these points in practice, how you would explain this. If they asked you about a transplant regarding the heart, liver, lungs, pancreas, stomach or intestines even and see how you'd adapt your answer to these. In terms of ecology, make sure that you're well versed in all of the definitions and I'll put them on the screen here for you to learn. Make sure that you know all the abiotic factors that can vary in an ecosystem as well. Also make sure that you're able to make calculations in terms of the food chains and also make sure that you know exactly where to place each organism in a food chain. What commonly happens is that people mix up the first and the last organism. So before the exam, just double check that you know the right order to put them in. Very common practicals to come up in this sort of paper is the quadrats experiment and the transex experiment. So make sure that you are able to explain how each of these experiments work, but also how to make calculations on these. And again, I'll leave you with some notes on these practicals for you to screenshot. Ecology is a massive topic, so make sure that you are familiar with all the different concepts as well, especially the water and carbon cycles, decay, biodiversity, global warming, deforestation, trophic levels, pyramids of biomass and biomass transfer just off the top of my head these are ones that could come up as well. I just want to talk a bit about inheritance as well because this is a commonly poorly answered topic in general so just make sure that you're aware of the whole concept of what inheritance is, make sure that you understand the topic before you start memorizing everything for example what even is DNA, what are chromosomes, what is a gene, what is an allele, what is the structure of DNA, what is the structure of a nucleus, just make sure that you know all of these concepts as well because what tends to happen is quite a lot of the time students will memorize different definitions but they don't really understand the topic and then when the paper asks you to apply your understanding standing in such as Punnett squares or tree diagrams which are very poorly answered they struggle with these sort of questions because they don't understand in the first place how inheritance works so make sure you're clued up with all of that to start with once you've grasped the understanding of this topic then go ahead and make sure that you're practicing the genetic diagrams before the paper you don't want the first time you see one of these diagrams to be in the paper because they're not the easiest to deal with and especially they take a bit of time if you're trying to work out what to do the perfect scenario is that the time that you see them in the exam, it's almost like muscle memory. You know exactly what to do, and to be honest, you can do it within like 30 seconds if you know what you're doing with it. What you can do is you can kind of memorize the different combinations, but um, if you're tight for time with this exam, I'd say just make sure you understand how to do it. Practice even just three or four of them, know exactly how you would answer one of those questions, and then you should be good in the exam. Now, I'm a dental student now, but it hasn't been long since I sat my GCSEs and A levels, so. Well, one thing I would say is don't be relying on predictions. Predictions should be there to supplement what you've already done in your revision. So make sure that you know every single topic anyway, you've gone over everything. And then you can use this to supplement your revision and just use it as a little bit to target certain areas and practice just before the exam. And this is only a short video, so I wouldn't have time to go over everything that could come up, but let me know in the comments what else you think could come up. And make sure to like and subscribe if you'd like to see a chemistry and a physics version of this video. And the link is in the video description if you'd like to book yourself in with one of our tutors. Thanks for watching.